insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 58. This is the first uh, in a new uh, format that we're going to be doing from time to time called our Karen Event Series. And today we will discuss the unavoidable topic of coronavirus. Uh, I am your host, Joseph Whalen, and my intelligent and insightful co host, Madison Whalen. Hello, everyone. So, Maddie, <clears throat> the. Uh, the format of this show, um, the current event series, is really to talk about <clears throat> what's in the news, what's really, you know, the important stuff that's in the news right now. Um, we'll talk about some of the facts of it. Uh, but more importantly, I want to I want to find out how it's affecting you. How are you, uh, as the average 13-year-old, uh, seeing this news? What are your opinions on it? How? What kind of an impact is it having on you? And just generally, what are the thoughts? Now, the first topic that we're talking about in this series is coronavirus, which is kind of impactful worldwide with us right now, right? Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> one of the things I would like to do is talk about some of the facts surrounding it, what we can do, how's it spread, that type of thing. But but this is sort of an unguided, unscripted discussion that I'd like to have today with you. So, are you ready to get started? Why not? All right, let's get going. <clears throat> so, instead of going into all the grueling details and talking about how it spreads and washing your hands and, and all that stuff, I do have um, a load of notes here from various sites, primarily the cdc.gov site. Um, I'd really like to just start off by asking you, what do you think of the coronavirus? What do you think of everything that's going on? Um, what are your thoughts? Just give me your thoughts. Well, as all of us know, the coronavirus is a natural um, worldwide issue that has been around for a little while, a few weeks, almost a month maybe. A few months. A few months, yeah. Um... And it has greatly impacted everyone's lifestyle. Um, um, it's impacted the entire world. And it's basically um, the modernized version of an apocalypse. Yeah, I guess, I guess you could kind of look at it that way, sure. Um, <clears throat> we've had a lot of impact on us across many levels. I mean, government shutdowns and shelter in places and all this kind of stuff. Um, but do you know what a coronavirus is? Um, I've just been hearing about all the, well, I really don't know what it actually is, even though like it's been around for a while now and I'm, but I still really don't know. I've only heard that it's like a really bad cold. Okay. And, and that's, Largely what most people take away from it. <clears throat> but um, coronaviruses have been around for quite some time. Coronavirus is a generic term, kind of like saying the flu. Mm -hmm. uh, there are different strains of the flu. The flu is influenza. And a coronavirus is a type of virus. And there are different strains of that virus. Mm. Um, for instance, um, there were other coronaviruses that have hit over the years. One was called SARS, Sudden Acute Respiratory Syndrome. Uh, that also came out of China. Another one came out of the Middle East called MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. <clears throat> this particular 
coronavirus. Um, everyone's referring to it as COVID-19. Uh, this is actually sudden acute respiratory virus uh, uh, syndrome, coronavirus-2. The name given to the disease that it causes is called COVID-19. So, and that's just specifics. I don't want to, <clears throat> I don't want to bore anybody with it, but the important thing to know is like when they say coronavirus, it's like saying the flu. It's just a generic term, like the common cold. Oh. Um, normally coronaviruses come from different animals. Um, it's rare that they're actually transferred to humans. Um, this one, they think, was transferred from a bat, for instance. Mm. Um, the MERS that happened in the Middle East was actually transferred to humans from camels. Uh, usually because of the different genetic structure between humans and animals, they're not compatible until they mutate and then they become compatible. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about coronavirus, it is something that <clears throat> is a generic virus. It causes flu-like symptoms. You know, you get coughing, you get a fever. Um, the vast majority of people that get it, you know, don't die from it. They just get very sick from it. So that's what the coronavirus itself is. Um, one of the other things is how does it spread? Do you know how the coronavirus spreads? Um, I'm assuming due to all the shutdowns, um, contact with others. That's a very good point. And, and... You can tell by how they're they're trying to deal with it right now that it does spread person to person. Um, there's no vaccine for it at this time. And normally when they generate vaccines, vaccines are grown in a lab and they have to study the genetics of it. And they basically have to figure out how to break down the DNA in a virus in order to immunize people to it. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of vaccines tend to be weakened versions of the virus that they inject into your body and then your body creates antibodies that attack it so by putting a weaker version of it into you, your body isn't um, as adversely impacted by the virus but it can still build its defenses mm. just like with the common cold and with the flus when you get it your body will build a defense to it so you likely won't get it again. Reinfection is very unlikely in this case for this strain. Um, but you're right. The way that it's transferred is, is, ex is ex exposure. So what a lot of governments are trying to do right now is try to limit that. And they're doing that through self-quarantine. If you have any symptoms, they want you to not be around other people, obviously. Um, they don't want you to go to public places, so they're trying to keep the, the number of people in public places down. It's A lot of it is just preventative measures that are common sense measures. Um, people who have to be in close contact for this. So one of the things they're telling you is if you're out and about, don't get within six feet of people. Um, they don't know if it spreads through the air, through touch. Different viruses spread different ways. Um, so there's things that people talk about to avoid getting the virus. And I don't want to go into a lot of detail with that, but we'll run down those real quick when we come back. So all the information that we're going to present today does come from the CDC website, cdc.gov. We are not experts. We are not doctors. Uh, at least I'm not. I'm Pretty sure you're not, right? Yeah. Okay. So what we provide here is publicly available. That's why I don't want to dwell too much on it. But it's some common sense stuff. It's all the same stuff you would do to, to not get a cold or not get the flu. Mm -hmm. Do you know what these are? Let me let me throw it at you and you tell me what you think these are. Um, I'm guessing one of the main ones is wash your, ha is wash your hands with water and soap. Absolutely. Because that's just been basically brainwashed in all our brains at this point. That's right. Um... Next is try, another one would be um, limit all contact with others except for like family members that like people who you're around like daily. Absolutely. Um, what happens if you're sick? What do you do? You quarantine yourself from others and um, just stay away and don't contact 
don't have contact with anyone. Yep. And what if you feel like you have to cough or sneeze? What should you do? Um, you should have a tissue and make sure you're at least covered. And then afterwards, wash your hands. Yeah. It's open water. And what if you don't have a tissue ready? Um. Where should you cough or sneeze? In your arm. Yep. Into your sleeve. Um. Cleaning and disinfecting. That's another one. Uh, so it's all it's all the basic stuff. It's basic hygiene. It's all the stuff that we already know what to do. Um, just wash your hands. That's probably the biggest thing because right now they're seeing that it it passes by touch. Um, and obviously, if you're sneezing, you're you're blowing out probably stuff that's contaminated. So you need to contain that. Um, what do you think you should do if, God forbid, you do get sick? Um. Maybe contact a hospital near you, um, notify um, any adults, but try not to go in contact with anyone. Um, no, you're right. Call your doctor, you know, if you think you've been exposed to the, the virus. Uh, if you develop a fever and you develop symptoms, um, and those symptoms are cough, difficulty breathing, then you call your health care provider, um, and that's... That's really what they want you to do right now. One of the problems we're running into is there's not a lot of tests ready for this. Mm. So the first thing most medical institutions will do is they'll test you for other things that cause these symptoms, like the flu. So they'll test you. They'll, they'll give you a battery of tests for most of the flu strains. And if you don't have the flu, if you, they come back negative and you still have symptoms, then they'll probably make you a candidate for the coronavirus test. Mm -hmm. They say to stay home, too. Uh, a lot of companies are closing down now. I know uh, we're in New Jersey, and Pennsylvania uh, just closed down. They, they went into a, I don't know what they're calling it. I don't know if it's a state of emergency or shelter in place or, or whatever. Um, but basically, they're saying that non-essential companies have to shut down. So... That'll keep a lot of people home and help to minimize the spread. Uh, New York did the same thing. Effective Monday, uh, non-essential are going to shut down. So it's possible they're going to do the same thing here in New Jersey. Uh, and again, that's really just a precaution. It's to minimize people's exposure, to try to arrest the, <clears throat> the spread of the disease. And if you think about it logically, if... If people don't interact with other people and the virus can't spread, it eventually will just die out. And that's exactly what they're trying to go for. Mm -hmm. uh, they say avoid public transportation, really avoid any public places Yeah, just to be safe. I know there's been, there's been news releases about them cleaning the subways and stuff like that. But if you, can't, if you don't have to be out in public, then you're, you really should just stay home. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if you do have to go see your doctor, call ahead. Some doctors are keeping different hours. Some doctors are keeping, you know, they have different pre-qualifications before you come in. Uh, a lot of doctors are just overwhelmed right now. So they want to screen you, pre-screen you before you come in so you don't, you're not sitting in a waiting room. Should you wear a face mask? Um, in a, um, uh, <laughs> I didn't realize that was going to be a painful question. Um, I know a lot of people, I know like people in China, um, whenever they're um, sick or there's an illness going around, they will wear masks. Um, I think some people could um, do wear masks, but I think as long as you just avoid um, contact with others, you might be fine. I mean, if you have like some symptoms of it, I would definitely probably recommend wearing a mask or something like that just to stop it. And that is a very good point. That's exactly what the medical professionals say. If you're not sick, don't wear a mask. And the reason for that is you don't need one because it's not going to stop you from getting sick. Um, and other people need those masks, which are in short supply. So medical yeah. professionals need them. If you're exhibiting symptoms, you should wear a mask. Now, there's a special type of mask that filters, you know, better than others, and it's this tight, conal-type mask called an N50, uh, N95. 
Um, if you're sick, you should wear that because it's best to contain it. And the reason they say to wear it is so that you don't spread it and get other people sick. Um, <clears throat> so if you're not sick, don't wear the mask. Don't go out and buy them. Don't hoard them. Um, if you have symptoms, then the medical professionals will generally provide a mask for you and a gown and stuff like that to minimize your contamination. Mm-hmm. Um, what about hand sanitizer? Does hand sanitizer work on this? Um, I've definitely seen a lot of people using it, but it's definitely not completely recommended. Um, soap and water is always like the main benefit, but if you don't, if you're not near a sink with soap and water, hand sanitizer is your next best thing. Like, um, carry it around in places where they're, um, well, just carry it around with you, um, just in case if, like, you do sneeze and you're not anywhere near a bathroom or anything, because um, that'll um, sort of help. That's true, and, and that's, that's entirely correct. They do recommend that any hand sanitizer that you use, you look at the uh, potency of the ingredients, make sure it's at least 60% alcohol. That's where you're going to get the most effectiveness. But soap and water is your best bet when you're washing, washing your hands. Um, and avoid touching things. Don't touch your nose. Don't touch your eyes. Keep your hands away from your face. Because uh, even with high clean hygiene or, or very good hygiene, you still get germs on your hands. And you don't want to tra transfer those to your face or risk that at, at this time. Basically, keep it away from any part of your body where a, a virus could get in. Uh, what about cleaning? Uh, what would you say people should do cleaning their house to, to try to kill any germs or anything? Any advice there? Um, probably um, with um, Lysol wipes is pretty good because they yeah. kill 99.9% .9 of germs apparently. <laughs> Not trying to advertise. That's an advertisement there. <laughs> um, um. But yeah, um, cleaning your house would definitely be able, would definitely probably prevent the virus because, um, like we said, contact is basically the main cause of the virus. And even though it's your own house, you could still just, um, they can still be just a bunch of germs running around. Yep. And the suggestion is high touch areas. So you want to make sure you clean surfaces that you touch a lot, your sink, your countertops, your tables. You want to clean chairs, kitchen chairs that you're pulling out. You want to clean your doorknobs, uh, anything that you touch a lot. You want to clean your phones, clean your remote controls, anything that people are going to touch a lot. You want to make sure you clean those uh, fairly frequently. Lysol wipes, any the Clorox bleach wipes, anything that has, um, uh, what's the D... Uh, what is the name that they give you that's the sanitizing? If As long as they're sanitizing wipe, then you should be fine to go. Um, so let's talk. Let's let's take a break. I think we covered all the, the basic information there. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll talk about what the warning signs are that you might have the virus. <laughs> So there's really uh, four basic things to look for, either in yourself or your family members or your friends or anyone that you're around. And if you see these, they don't necessarily all have to be evident, but if you see any of these, then you probably want to contact uh, medical experts. The first is difficult breathing or shortness of breath. Uh, the one thing that's very dangerous about this virus is it attacks your your uh, respiratory system. So it makes it difficult to breathe. It gets into your lungs, you start to cough. Uh, so if you have persistent pain or pressure in your chest, it could be a sign that you're building up fluid. Um, if there's um, confusion, you know, if you start feeling confused or disoriented, it's another one. Uh, and the last one here is bluish lips or face. Now, all of these are uh, examples of what happens when your body's lacking oxygen. So that's the one thing to really keep in mind. If you've got a fever and a slight cough and you're feeling achy and weak, there are symptoms as well. Um, and if you have those symptoms, that's really early stage 
uh, low priority uh, stuff that you can you can endure makes you feel uncomfortable, right? Mm-hmm. But any of these other signs that are issues with breathing or low uh, blood oxygen and stuff like that, that's when you might have a serious problem. That's when you want to contact medical help. Certainly by this point, you should be under medical care. Mm-hmm. Uh, if there are medical emergencies, 911. 911 system is still up and running. Uh, regardless of the emergency status that we have right now, I'll still call your 911. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about your pets? What do you? How do you think this affects the pets? Is there a, a concern for our pets' health? Is there preparations that we should do for pets? What do you? What do you think I should be worried about with my pets? Um, I honestly never knew that it could really affect pets, and it probably could since uh, most of these coronaviruses have come from basically animals, and um. I guess just try to get your pet, maybe get your pet to a vet if you can, if they're open. Or. That's a very good recommendation. Now, there's no evidence at this time that suggests that dogs or cats or other household pets can spread the disease. Uh, but the CDC does recommend that if you are sick or exhibiting symptoms, that you distance yourself from your pets just like you could from, you should from other people. Um, even though you probably won't get them sick, it's entirely possible. Just like you can get germs, you can spread the, the germs, or the virus by touching things. You, you can turn your pet into a carrier. And then if someone goes and pets your dog, they could possibly get it. The one thing they do recommend is in the event that you do get sick, make sure that you have plenty of supplies. Make sure you've got food. For, the, for your pets, make sure their water is kept up and so forth because if you get sick, you might not be able to get up and take care of your pets as frequently as you normally do. Change your cat's litter boxes, change your uh, the fish bowl if you've got water in the, in the fish bowl. Make sure all that stuff is proactively taken care of. Um, but I think for the most part, our pets are generally safe from this as long as we don't contaminate them and have them spread it. Mm-hmm. Uh, any other thoughts on prevention or anything else to stay safe? Um, I think we mainly covered the basics. Um, I'm pretty sure there are, are a few other ones that we can... Um, that there we could um, discuss, but right now I really can't think of any specific. That's cool. Okay. So I want to come back and I have a series of questions about the direct effect on you and and what this is doing to you and, and other kids your age. Mm-hmm. So you've been remote schooling this whole week now. Yep. Uh, What does that mean to you? What effect has it had? And what are your thoughts on that so far after four, four and a half days of that? Okay. So remote learning is basically you, you're homeschooled basically. Um, there's an app called Google classroom we use and our teachers post assignments on there, um, for us to do over, um, the span of however long it is until we go back to school. Um, I have basically taken it and um, since I have different periods, I break the day um, up into those periods to get the work done. Um, it doesn't take, it normally doesn't take the entire time to do, but sometimes I do go um, a bit over the clock, but um, um, I've basically been remote, I've, the remote learning has just been like assignments that are just posted online. Um, today was basically, um, pretty, um, lay bad because, um, it was basically a catch up day for some of my classics, my classes saying like, um, it's hard to, uh, do assignments due to the remote learning. So, um, they gave us a catch up day. So how difficult has the adjustment been 
for you going from in school, in classroom with the teacher in front of you and all your friends around to basically being, you know, by yourself in a room, even though, you know, mommy and daddy have been around. How has that, that change been for you? Has, has that had an effect on your learning? Um, in a way, um, I've actually, um, uh, sometimes I finish assignments earlier than I than I anticipate, and that gives me more time for projects. Honestly, um, it has affected my sleep schedule only a little bit. I wake up at 7 now, and I don't have to wake up that early in the morning anymore. I can also go to bed a little later. Um, I'm normally always home with Mommy. I was only really home with you one day of the week. Um... Uh, my lunch schedule has changed too. Since I know in f since in fourth period when it's like 10 a.m., that's when I normally have lunch. Um, right. But we, no me and mommy, normally have lunch around 12 now. Um, I basically do all my homework in our kitchen. Um, most of the assignments are on um, are basically virtual and on the computer. But sometimes I do have to write, and that makes me forget my pencil in my room, so I have to constantly go up there, <laughs> which is annoying. Well, the house is a lot smaller than the school, though, right? Two point. Um, and after, like, basically every period, I would go up to Mommy, um, talk to her, see how she's doing, tell her my progress, and maybe do some sort of small activity before I went down. Because the first three days of the week... Um, for gym, I actually had I had to do 40 minutes of exercise, depending on for four different activities. So I had to do that. But now that I'm in health, I'm not doing that. So I just have to get up and do something when it's my break. Right. So have you run into any roadblocks or any any real difficulties in trying to complete assignments, any technical difficulties or anything like that, or has it been pretty smooth sailing for you? I mean, of course, in the beginning of the week, of course, it's going to be rough um, because it's the whole new remote learning thing. Um, but Mama gets notifications. I get notifications for assignments I need to do. Good thing about Google Classroom is that there's also, it says, like, when assi what when assignments are due, so you know, like, okay, when I need to complete this, what do I need to complete? Um, I've gotten more adjusted to it, um, but yesterday I kind of overworked myself a bit. Um, um, there was this one assignment that I, that, um, I needed to do, and it took me a pretty long time, but thanks to your help, I was able to get it done faster than I probably would have. So, and the last question I think I have on this one is, is there any advice that you have for any other kids out there who have to work from home and, and do their schoolwork from home that, that might help them along? Well, um, I can definitely say from experience because I had actually texted my one friend Chris, who is the same age as me and actually shares my science period, and he said that he was stressed and tired and he didn't like remote learning at all so I gave him a few positives and I would probably do that with anyone else like well um you don't have to wake up as early anymore to get on the bus um you can wake up basically anytime you really need to that's a good point um you can also basically do school in your pajamas so <laughs> yes you can I guess that's a plus also sometimes like if there are certain kids you really don't like seeing in school, guess what? You don't have to see them. Yeah. Social distancing is a plus. Yeah. Um, yeah, honestly, this whole whole thing sucks. Like, you can barely talk. You can't talk to anyone in person. But um, luckily with the Internet now, um, we're able to um, talk to the people who we want, who we um really should talk to and those are basically our friends and um so well, that's family members. that's a good point and that's a good segue into my next series of questions how has this affected your social life in talking to your friends and hanging out with your friends and stuff what's been the impact there um well 
of course, I don't really see any of my friends. I can't really see them unless I do FaceTime, and I haven't done that yet. Um, thing is, in the beginning of this whole thing, I was actually supposed to have a sleepover with all my friends for one of my friend's birthdays, but then the whole, um, virus came up, and then I realized I couldn't do it because of social distancing, and I was pretty bummed about that. So has there been any other negative effects socially on you other than you just haven't been able to see your friends uh, and go to that party? Were there any other things that you missed out on? Any school trips, anything like that that, that you're missing out on? I mean, there was the Moroccan Period 3 reward for um, the students, and we were all really anticipating it because we got to go see a movie, but... Of course, that prob that got held back. Um, honestly, a lot of school stuff got held back, and we. I'm just hoping we can go back to school in a few weeks. So, how do you think this is going to affect school? I mean, we've got oh, what a couple of months left: April, May, June for school. You know, two two and a half months or so left for school. Um, you know, they're anticipating probably 30 days for. Or isolation or so here. Um, some schools have actually canceled school for the rest of the year around yeah. the country. Uh, how do you think this is going to affect this year, this this tail end of this year here? Do you think there's going to be any major changes, any major problems or anything? I mean, like you said before, some schools have just completely canceled school for the rest of the year, and it's basically just remote learning. And I really don't want it to come to that point to my school because I really don't want to um, do remote learning for the rest of the school year. I mean, sure, we're more than, we're probably more than halfway through the year, but I really don't anticipate having to have everything completely online. And I, like, like my one friend just completely hates remote learning. And like, yeah, it's a tough situation. I don't think anyone was really expecting this or. Um, even geared up for it at this point in time. So I think it's kind of a lot of people just trying to make the most out of out of the situation at this point. Yeah. What do you miss the most out of going into school? Um, certainly not waking up early. Yeah, certainly not that. Um, I, as much as I say that I really don't want to socialize a lot, I kind of do. I do miss hanging, talking with my friends at school um, because. Um, I really enjoy talking to them, and they can relate to me. Um, but there's a lot of things I'm I'm definitely sure I don't miss at school. <laughs> I but, didn't want to get into that. But, you know. But I definitely do miss talking to my friends in person. Um, so, and, and there are things to that, re with with that respect to that, that, you know, we can, we can make some changes and, and, you know, we'll adjust to this if it's going to be an extended period of time. We'll, we'll come up with something, right? You mm -hmm. know, we'll, we'll make do. Uh, how about mom and dad working from home? So I did, I worked from home one day this week. Mommy was home the, the rest. Uh, how's that had an effect on you? Have you seen an effect on us? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um... Um, I definitely think having you guys here for the first week has definitely helped me because I had, like, a lot of questions. Like, you know, on Sunday I was just asking, like, okay, how are we going to do this? What are my assignments? How are we, what, how are we going to do the assignments? What do I need from school? Yada, yada, yada. Yes, there was indeed a lot of yada, yada, yadas. Hmm. Uh, has it been a good experience for you having, having mommy and daddy home? Honestly, since I really don't, uh, since most of the time um, you guys normally aren't around because I'm at school, you're at work, it is nice having knowing that mommy's um, there and knowing that you were there. Um, and um, I definitely think I've gotten closer with you guys. Um, I've had, I always have lunch with you guys, and I actually um, yesterday waited on mommy for lunch because she had to go into a meeting and it lasted longer than she thought it would but um mm. i wanted to wait for her because i enjoy ha um eating lunch with her well that's nice so let's kind of take a little different twist here and and see what the if, if there's a a direct connection here so do you have anyone that you know who is actually sick from this not that i know of no um I've never really 
asked any of my friends if they knew anyone um, who was sick or if they had any relatives who were sick. Um, um, I don't think any of us are sick, so. No, I think fortunately we've we've dodged a bullet so far in, yeah. in our house. Um, the high risk group that that seems to be people mo- seem to be most concerned about are people over sixty, uh, people with respiratory issues, heart conditions, and so forth. Uh, is there anyone in your immediate circle or extended family that fits that profile that you might be concerned about? Well, you fit that description, Daddy, and I'm kind of scared, and I don't want you to end up having it since you have um a whole slew of problems. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know if mommy's affected or not, but anybody else? Mm. Um, some of my extended family might be affected. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried about Jima, who was uh, actually going to be on an upcoming podcast, mm. which we uh, we pre-recorded for our grandparents segment. Yeah. Uh, Pepe is another one that I'm concerned about as well. Uh, and I, you know, I just hope everyone who who's out there is is safe and and taking all the precautions they need to. Uh, I have one question left, and I suspect that it's probably going to be a complex one. Oh, wonderful. Um, it's a simple question, but the answer might be complex. Oh, God. Seeing all this stuff on the news, hearing Mommy and Daddy talk about it, seeing all the stuff going on with school, are you scared by all this? Uh, in a way, yes, because this, um, this was a pretty big outbreak. It's been affected worldwide, and pretty much every school in the world is closed. Some countries are under lockdown, um, and people basically can't do anything at this point. Like, normally we have a bunch of stuff planned for the weekend, but with this whole coronavirus thing going on, every... We've basically got an entire free weekend, and normally, before, I would be, like, okay with it because I like staying home on the weekends, but knowing about this entire virus and knowing how many people it's, well, how many lives it's taken, I'm just, honestly, I'm scared, and I really don't know how long it'll last, and I don't want it to last long, because it, like... We're not one of the main affected groups. I mean, mommy can easily, you and mommy can easily work from home, and but there are some families who have to stop working, and I'm pretty sure they were only. I don't know if they get paid or not for it, and yeah. like stores are basically ghost towns, and so your fear, your that you're, you know, this this thing that you're afraid of, are you? Are you afraid for yourself? Are you afraid for mommy and daddy? Are you afraid for other people? Where Where's that fear coming from? Well, I'm afraid for you and mommy because I don't want you guys to end up having it because, well, I love you guys and I really don't want you guys to end up having it because I know you're one. I because I know you're one of the main targeted groups and I don't want other. I I can't imagine what others are going through because some. Other people have it way worse than us. Like, some people have had relatives who had the coronavirus, and some even and some ended up dying. Some aren't in very good financial um, state, and like it's harder to find the food and um, supplies you need. And people yeah. are panicking, and like this whole thing is basically, once again, basically the apocalypse. Like. Yeah, and, and, you know, I think it's alarming. I think um, I think of anything, all of our government leaders and our corporate leaders, I think they're being smart and they're erring on the side of caution to try and combat this. I think of anything, we're overreacting, which is a good thing. Yeah. It's, we're much better overreacting than underreacting. Um, and, I, and I think... You know, a lot of what's going on is is appears to be scary because it's it's unprecedented. We haven't seen it before. Two point. Um, but I think for the most part, the world's going to continue to spin on. Society is going to bounce back. You know, 
this will take its toll and it's going to take some time to to come back from this but uh this this I'm pretty sure this isn't the end of the world. Yeah. You know, I I think we've seen worse things than this in the past. Um, and I think the reaction that people are having to this is because we've seen worse things. And the panic that people have is that they're just trying to survive it. Um, so that human instinct, that survival instinct, I think, is what's kicking in. And that's what we're seeing now. Um I think it's probably not as bad as the media is making it out to be. To a point. Um, and I think, and, and I'm not saying that to fault the media. I, I really think the media, just like a snowstorm, right? Or a hurricane. You know, the media wants to get out word that this is potentially a really bad thing. And if you don't take it seriously, it's going to be really bad. Uh, they do the same thing with major weather events. And a lot of times the, the weather forecasters take heat when, okay, we could potentially get 15 feet of snow out of this storm and it turns out to be a little rainstorm. And then everyone criticizes them. Well, okay, but if it was 15 feet of snow, my pantries are filled, I got plenty of toilet paper, and I'm fine. So what's the worst case scenario? It rained. Okay, well, my pantries are full and I got plenty of toilet paper. It's not like I'm not going to use it, right? So they didn't cause a public panic. They raised awareness. And I think a lot of what you're seeing from the media now is raising that awareness so that we do take it seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do take care of ourselves and we do have proper hygiene. Um, they're doing it in, in a very serious way that we're not used to. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I don't think... It's the end of the world. Exactly. Um, I think people need to take it seriously. They need to do the right thing and everyone, everything will be fine. Um, that was all that I had. Did you have any questions for me, uh, about this, about our response to it or anything like that? Nope. Not that I can think of. Okay. I think this was a good discussion. I think we brought a lot of things out, you know, again, for the key information to this, you want to go to. Uh, www.cdc.gov. All the information is there. Uh, what to do to prevent it, what the symptoms are, and what to do if you exhibit symptoms. Uh, they don't have anything up there for how to stay awake through a podcast, though, so I can't help you with your yawning. Will you stop, please? Um, <laughs> Why do you always have to mention that? Because <laughs> you do it when the camera's on you. It's okay. It's funny. It's banter. People like that. Really? I don't know. Nobody gives us feedback, so I can't tell. Well, people give... Well, anyone watching this, please give us feedback. Tell us who's right and who's wrong. Exactly. Uh, so did you have any closing remarks or shout-outs? Um, just a message, basically. All right. We'll come back and we'll get your closing message. And, uh, oh, look at that. The dryer's done. <laughs> <laughs> Go for your closing message. Um, I've heard a lot of people say this, and I'm just going to say it again because, well, one, it's helpful information, and two, I know people are probably going to get annoyed at this, so please stay safe and healthy. Um, that's basically all we can really do. Who's going to get annoyed at that? I don't know. <laughs> Who gets annoyed when you wish them to stay safe and healthy? Okay, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Um, wash your hands with soap and water. If you don't have soap and water, try to use hand sanitizer. If you are sick, make sure you take, make sure you isolate yourself, let your doctor know, and please use all of our facts that we have provided and look up some if you um, still have any questions. All right, very good. One last thing I did want to say, the CDC does actually have... Uh, a couple of recipes for bleach-based and alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Since they're in short supply, you can actually make them at home. That information's on the CDC site. Uh, before we go, uh, let's tell you how to give us feedback, even though most people don't. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on the web at www.insightsintothings.com. You can catch our YouTube videos on youtube.com slash insights into things. We are on the Twitter at insights underscore things. You can catch us on Facebook at facebook.com 
slash insights into things. Or you can get us on our audio podcast at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. And we stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. Awesome. Uh, Just as programming note, we probably will be postponing. We were scheduled to tape Insights into Tomorrow, ironically enough, tomorrow. Uh, but we will probably be postponing that until uh, things clear up with the coronavirus, ironically enough. Yep. So that is it for us. We are done. Bye, everyone. Another one in the books.